so welcome to the channel. This week we're going to be working on a Mary Quant design, the Georgie dress. So uh, grab a brew, put your feet up and let's get started. So you're probably aware that recently Mary Quant passed away, like within the last few weeks at the time of filming. Now I've actually been planning a Mary Quant project for quite some time. I downloaded the free patterns from the v &A website years ago. Uh, I just haven't got around to making it, but now that I have the Gamages machine, which if you haven't seen it before, is featured in my uh, 100 Years of Sewing Machines video. Um, I haven't actually sewn anything on it yet, but it seems like the appropriate machine to use because this is the type of machine that would have been available at the time that Mary Quant was designing. It's uh, the style of machine that my mother learnt to sew on. I haven't actually clarified with her whether that was at school or at home. Uh, but I have got little snippets of information from her, like it's very easy to burn your hand on the, the bulb in the light at the back here. Whether I'll actually use the light very much or not, I don't know, because with the craft room, the sewing machine sits in front of the, the window, so I may not need it. Um, it does work. I'm a little reluctant to use it, because I don't know if I'll be able to get replacement bulbs for it. Um, but yeah, so the gamma machine, machine, it's an electric machine, um, but I'm going to need to clean it before I start sewing with it so i'm gonna do that um very shortly and i'm gonna do that before i do the twirl for the bodice of the dress that i'm going to make um that way i get a practice on this machine because as i say i've not sewn with it yet now uh, the dress that i'm gonna make is the georgie dress uh, normally when you think mary quant you think mini skirts and you think the a-line mini skirt dress uh, much like this one um, and I do have a pattern for that because the V&A did have, when I downloaded them, two patterns available. Um, I'll have a look and see if they've got any more if I get round to it. Um, there are two Mary Quant patterns available. Um, the well-known A-line mini dress one. And then this other dress, the Georgie dress, which appeals to me a bit more because there's a little bit more to it in terms of sewing techniques. It's a pleated skirt. And there's uh, frills on the, the neckline and on the, the sleeve, so a little bit more to it, which I like the idea of. Now, the original was designed in stripy fabric, and the stripes go one way in the bodice, and then they go horizontally around the skirt. So in the pattern, you self-draft the skirt, which is fine. You can do that. That's not a problem. But they have you cut it out as if you're working with striped fabric, and I'm not going to be working with striped fabric. Uh, partly because I don't have any, um, but also because I want to do it in this elephant print fabric, uh, well, elephant jungle print, which of course is a directional print, and I don't really want my elephants and trees on this side going around the skirt. So I'm going to have to do, I think, three panels to get the length of skirt to pleat down into the, the waist measurement and then trim off any excess. Um, so hopefully I've got enough fabric to do the three panels. Um, I'll probably cut out the bodice, the belt and frills first and then cut the panels with what's left. Um, to get three evenly sized panels, I won't be using the full width of the fabric, so I should have enough to, to do that. Um, and I can obviously fudge it a little bit, like an inch or two here or there. Um, I think like overall on the circumference of the skirt and the length of the skirt will be done to my measurements. So that's the plan. I do have the 12 pieces for the bodice cut out already. I'm not going to worry about twirling the skirt because it's a rectangle. It'll be fine. So I'm also not going to go into great detail about how I'm cleaning this sewing machine because I've not done it before. So um, I'll come back to you once it's ready to go and we can sew up the twirl. Okay, so let me give you a quick tour of the Gamma G's. So, obviously we've got a thread holder at the top. Uh, there's a bobbin winder mechanism here that I haven't worked out how to use yet. And uh, thread comes along through the mechanism here. Down right through, through the front, got the tensioning wheels here. And on my modern machines, this is all enclosed. So that's where I can deal with my stitch tension. Yeah, directly on the tensioning wheels or plates, whatever you call them. The thread continues around here 
and into the needle. Obviously, there's no automatic uh, needle threader tool thing, and the handheld ones are too big to fit through the hole, so that's a bit annoying. Now, the plate here, the bobbin cover plate, is missing, but we have found a website where we can get a replacement. Actually, a vintage replacement, not a modern replica, so that's exciting. Uh, it be about 13 quid, so when I get around to doing that, I'll do that. We've got a sewing table here, so that's going to be nice and handy for uh, supporting the fabric. That's actually more space than I've got on my modern machines to support the fabric, so that's nice. Uh, I don't think this throat is actually any larger in size than my modern machines, but it certainly feels it, because the machine itself is less. Um, over on this side, we have a forward and reverse, so we can go do forward stitch and back stitch. Um, and in the middle, when you put the lever to zero, you can unscrew this and change the stitch length. There's three stitch lengths on this machine. And down here we have the normal thread, silk thread, embroidery thread, switcher. This is to do with bobbin winding, I believe, so I think this is where you put the thread for bobbin winding. And I think that might be something to do with bobbin winding as well. But like I say, I haven't worked out how to use this bit yet. There'll be something to do with this wheel. Um, I don't have the manual for this machine at the moment, although I believe we can get one. Um, there are oiling holes here. So I can use that to oil the mechanism. There's oiling holes in the top of these bits as well. And on the back here, I can unscrew this plate to access the moving parts in here for cleaning and maintenance. And when I turn them so that the needle is down, they actually come up to this point here so I can oil them from there. So it's a really well thought out piece of kit. Um, yes, I opened it up to clean it underneath, not that it needed much cleaning. It hasn't had much use since its last service, but when, something, when machines haven't been used for a while, I think it's always worth giving a bit of a clean and oil. But under normal maintenance, I won't need to lift this plate up, which is good because it's actually quite heavy and it's heavier than the base. So it doesn't really sort of sit flat without me like holding it down. Um, and obviously at the moment to change the bobbin, I'll either have to lift up or lift up this bit of paper that I've used to fill in the space for the, the bobbin cover. Um, but it's only washi tape, so that's not going to be too much of a problem. My next step before I start sewing up my twirl is to actually measure from the needle Five eighths of an inch because uh, there's no markings on this plate like I have on my modern machine to so show me where that is. So I'm going to mark it with washi tape. Um, again, that's not going to damage the paint mark on the machine. It'll just make it a bit more functional for me. Um, eyeballing it at the moment, I'm not sure I'll get the accuracy until I know where on this machine five eighths is. Because I will probably end up using the screws as a reference point once I've worked that out. Okay, so we're ready to get to sewing. Um, I've got my pattern instructions here. Uh, we're just going to sew up the bodice twirl at the moment. It does have a back zip and in the instructions it does have you prepare the bodice for fitting before you put the zip in because you don't put that in until after you put the skirt on. But it doesn't have you do any sort of fastening at the back so I'm not sure how that's going to get an accurate fit but hey it's a free pattern. So for my twirl I do have a spare zip here that I'll be using so that I uh, can actually do it up to try it on. Uh, this is like a pale sagey green, like a very, very pale green. I have a white one for the final dress. Um, they are invisible zips. Um, not sure how this foot will cope with that. And I can't put my modern uh, invisible zip foot on to do it, so uh, we'll see. We'll see how it works. Um, I may have to invest in some more feet before I set up the final one because the attachment um, looks different. Well, it's definitely different. They're screw on feet, whereas my genome is clip on feet. Um, but yeah, so the, the machine has had a little mini service and a little test run. Um, I've noticed that the pedal is a lot heavier than the, my modern machines. It's not as sensitive. So I need to put my foot down a bit more on this machine. Uh, but yes, yeah, so I'm going to sew up the bodice and put a zip in to try it on. And uh, yeah, 
See if I need to adjust the fit at all. Okay, so we've had a short break from finishing off this twirl because this, this here, is the original uh, like rubber band tyre thing that goes on the bobbin winder. So when I started rewinding the bobbin, it just uh, disintegrated and we had the smell of burning rubber everywhere. So I've had to order a new one. So that's replaced, that's now working, that's all fine. Um, but it did give me the opportunity, whilst I was there, to get ha -ha, a new plate for uh, covering the bobbin over. I also ordered some spare bobbins and some zip feet. So, yeah. Let's get back to getting this twirl bit together. Okay, so I'm going to try out my zip feet. Now, this is a standard zip foot. I say it's an adjustable zip foot, but it's for like normal um, old school zips with exposed uh, teeth, um, which is supposed to work on this machine. So, I mean, that should be fine because the needle will go through the little indentures on either side and there's no metal on the outside. So that should be fine for normal zips. I've also got, because I prefer invisible zips, an invisible zipper foot. Obviously this is not period appropriate for this machine, um, but uh, so yeah, so I've got an invisible zip for this project, so I'm going to try the, the invisible zip foot out again. It should be fine. The gaps seem to be in the right places for where I need them to be, so uh, yeah. Okay, so this is the bone to the bodice. Um, obviously I've not done the sleeves yet. Um, actually I'm quite happy with this fit. Um, I can be a little bit more uh, sparse perhaps with the seam allowances uh, around the waist but it's fine, it's not tight, it's not pulling in and I'm obviously wearing it over a layer. Um, this is about the same thickness as a, a slip would be. So yes yeah, so I'm not I'm not annoyed with that fit at all. Um, I have put a zip in the back, um, which is not quite long enough for the bodice. It's obviously a longer zip in the dress, so it goes down into the skirt. And so I've got a little bit at the top that's not zipped up, but I'm, that's not my major concern for, for fit issues, to be honest. Um, there's room for manoeuvre around here at the moment, which is fine. Obviously this will be a centimetre lower because the bodice is fully lined and I haven't done that on this. So the crossover will be ever so slightly lower. So I mean, I am going to need to think about underlayers <laughs> where they come up to. Um, but yeah, that's it's not going to be a major issue. Uh, fitting quite nicely at the back as well. It's quite comfortable. Um, so yeah, all in all, happy so far. Uh, obviously, the next step is the sleeves. And I know you can see a little bit of wrinkling and stuff going on around here but I'm thinking once the skirt is on gravity that's going to help smooth that out a bit um it's also a viscose chalet that I'm going to be sewing it up in which is a bit more drapey so I don't think that's going to be an issue um but yeah sleeves are the next thing and um you know I can have issues with sleeves and I'm thinking that this arm side might be a little low because it's coming to there and they are fitted sleeves so I'm thinking the arm side probably wants to be a bit higher but we'll find out so I'll, I'll get this off and I'll uh, get one of the sleeves in and 
and we'll see how we're doing. Oh, actually, thinking about the uh, crossover at the front, yes, it's going to be a centimetre lower, but there's a frill to go on. Nice. Won't have to worry about coverage at all. <laughs> so that's good. Okay, sleeve is attached. I went in quite well. It's a little bit weird here. Um, the way they do it is they give you a really short uh, gathering section um, and no notch for the shoulder seam, which is different to what I'm used to. I think what I'll probably end up doing is a longer gathering session because all my gathers have ended up there and it's just a bit peculiar. Um, range of motion wise, yeah, that's not quite right. It needs to be further in at the front. Um, so I need to change the arm side. To, so it's pulling here. So it's the same issue I had on the 50s dress. Um, so I'll have a little bit of a think about that sleeve and make some adjustments and try again with the other side. Um, I might just take this one out because it's a bit awkward to put it on when the zip's not quite long enough. Um, I also want to put a bit more room into the sleeve because obviously once it's got the lining in, not that the lining's very thick and the fabric and reason for the final dress isn't very thick. But, uh, I just think it's going to be a little on the snug side. Lengthwise I'm okay with it. There is a frill to go on the bottom so it's going to be elbow length dress uh, uh, sleeves. But yeah, I need to bring this sleeve, this arm side in to about there I think. So we bring it into here just to give me a bit more range of motion. Particularly as this is a back zip dress. I'm okay with where the shoulder is. But uh, yeah, I think I need it coming in more kind of there. Hopefully you can see that. So uh, that's really where I want my armhole to be. And you can see that it's uh, pulling a bit around the bicep because it's just a little, a little tighter than I think it needs to be. And yeah, I think we need to raise that armhole is just the answer is coming down onto the sleeve quite a bit, so that's a bit strange. So yeah, so a little bit of think about that sleeve. Um, given that this is a free pattern and that's the only adjustment I'm definitely going to need to make. I mean, I could if I wanted to make the bodice slightly longer. I'm not going to. It's so where it sits. I mean, my, my jeans are sitting kind of high here. Um, obviously I do have short waist and my waist is up here um, so it is going to have the right proportions um, but yeah not, not overly keen on that arm side for me everybody's body shape is different so uh, yeah I'll have a play around with that before I get to sewing up the final dress okay so this is the new sleeve and I've got considerably more range of motion than I have on the old one so that's a plus. I may still want to put a gusset in in the final fabric but we'll see how but I can get my arm quite high up with minimal lifting there so maybe not and uh, we'll see how it behaves in the final fabric. Um, I've still got a bit of excess here um, but I can bring the front of the, the arm site in a bit further in I think I have. When I redrafted the sleeve, I redrafted the arm side on the bodice as well. I think I have put it in a little bit further than I've actually trimmed it off. So it's a slight bodge fitting it in. Um, but I'll make sure that's a little bit further in. Probably to about there. Um, so another half inch at the top of the shoulder. At the front, the back, I think will be fine because once that's taken a bit further, the gathering on the sleeve cuff a little bit further to spread out and um, so that's fine and it's at a point where I can tweak it if need be in the final fabric and play around the seam allowances and we should be fine I'm just pulling still a little bit across here so that's where I think I need to bring the arm sight in there a bit more um but yeah we're definitely almost there there are a few other tweaks that on reflection I'm going to make so I like where the bodice is stopping 
at the moment, particularly at the front well, and at the back actually. Um, there is a two centimetre seam allowance though on the bottom of the bodice, which will bring it almost an inch further up. And I think that's a little too high for me for that seam line to be. Um, I want to extend the length of, of my upper torso rather than shorten it. So I'm going to add the seam allowance again onto the bottom of the, the redrafted pattern pieces. Um, I'm also going to drop down the waist stars at half an inch um, at the top. So they'll come down into that new seam allowance. And just it's ever so slightly lower, but they're a little bit too close for comfort to the apex of my bust there. And um, they're not far off. I think half an inch is going to be plenty. It might even be slightly too much, but we'll go with half an inch. Um, the other adjustment I'm going to make, um, well, the sleeve already adjusted the pattern. I've made that quarter of an inch wider on either side, so half inch in total for the circumference, to give it a little bit more ease in the sleeve. Obviously, I've reshaped the the cap, and as I say, I haven't quite adjusted the bodice arm side correctly on the toile compared to what I've done on the pattern pieces. Uh, so I, mean, I will double check that before I cut it out in the final fabric to make sure that the the arm size actually doing what I want it to do in the actual paper piece. So yeah, it's just a question of bringing the, shortening the uh, shoulder seam ever so slightly. Um, on this side, you can see my shoulder seam is running fairly straight. It's not totally, totally straight, but it's close enough. It's been pulled a bit further off by the sleeve on this side. So um, making those adjustments should help redress that, I hope. Um, the other change I'm gonna make compared to the toile is at the back. Um, I like the length. And that's sitting nicely from my sway back, which is why I don't mind adding the seam allowance onto the bottom. Um, I may only need to add one centimetre of seam allowance at the back, but we'll see. Um, the zip, I used the invisible zipper foot for the gamma juice for the vintage machine. And it doesn't quite get close enough to the teeth, which is why the zip is actually visible at the back. So I'm going to try doing it with the standard zip foot and see if that works for the invisible zip. The shape of it, I think it's going to sit closer to the feet than the invisible zipper foot, um, which I think will give me a better result. And if it comes to it, then I have to stitch through both layers of the fabric rather than just the seam allowance I can normally do for an invisible zip, um, then I will. Um, the original would have had a visible zip anyway, so not too fussed about that. Um, I've got a white zip for the final dress. So next steps, uh, here's my fabric. So it's this lovely white background with this blue jungle elephant print on it. So I'm going to give this a press and the white cotton voile that I've got for lining the bodice because the bodice is fully lined, which is great. It means I don't need to worry about any seam finishes. Uh, so yeah, get that pressed, get it cut out, and then uh, hopefully get it sewn up this week. We'll see how far we get. And you'll know how far I get in, in a couple of minutes because uh, you'll see whether I finished it or not <laughs> with this vlog. Um, yeah, so that's where I'm at at the minute. A few tweaks to make to this, but I know I'm on the like, right tracks there. Um, yeah this fabric is much more drapey than this as well so that will make a bit of a difference to the fit and to the ease of movement as well um but yeah i think we're definitely on the right lines okay so everything is cut out of the final fabric so this is the uh, visco chalet for the outside and i've got uh, a white voile uh, for the lining of the bodice so everything's good to go and i have my fork with me. Apparently you need a fork for this pattern. Uh, I believe that's for the pleats of the skirt. So uh, yeah, let's get to sewing. where 
frill is attached to the outer bodice. It's sewn on to the outer bodice and I have pinned in place the cotton voile lining. So that's ready to be stitched on. So what they refer to in the pattern as a frill sandwich. Um, but my machine being a vintage machine is starting to overheat a little bit. The pedal's getting quite warm. So I'm going to switch off and take a break for a while. So that does mean that I haven't factored in enough time for um, getting it all done to get finished dressed to you this week. Um, I should have known really fully lined bodice. Takes a bit of time if you're doing everything twice. Um, but I will be editing what I've got so far and getting that out to you. And next weekend I will have the finished dress for you. So whilst you're waiting for that after you finish watching this video, there'll be another one on screen here to keep you entertained whilst you're waiting for that finished Mary Quant dress. And I will see you soon.